2018 question. That was question three. In the quadrilateral ABCD, so a quadrilateral is just a shape with uh, four equal si uh, I mean four sides. So you can see A, B, C, D, that's a quadrilateral. And they've given us that A, B is A as you see the label, and A, D is B as you're able to see. B, C is 2B, okay? They've given us B, C, A to 2B. Now, it becomes very nice when they give now these ratios. A, E to A, C is 1 to 2. What does that mean? A, E, so A, E, okay? To AC is 1 to 2, meaning that AE is 1. Okay, that's the first one that they've mentioned. And then AC is 3. So AC is starting from there up to the end there. And this is supposed to be 3. Okay, so if they've given us that A up to E is 1, and then from A up to C is 3, what would be E to C? That's the question now I want to ask. What is going to be EC? What do you think? Yes. So, so if um, A... Uh -huh. Okay. Um, we are going to find the answers for AE. Mm -hmm. So AE is V. So... A, E, they've mm. given you is 1. And then A, C, they've given you is a 3. Now I want you to find this one. E, C, what is going to be E, C? Oh, okay, I understand. So what do you think? What is going to be the answer for E, C? No, that's not the question. Sure. So E, C is going to be 2. Why? Because E, a C from A itself to C itself is supposed to give you three. So if they've given you that this is one, then this is going to be two because the total is supposed to give you three. Do you get that? Do you understand what I mean? Yes, I understand. Okay. So now let's work at these questions. Question one. But I, and then they've given us A, we want to find AE. Okay, we want to find AE. What is AE? Just from here up to here. Now the question is, how do we find AE? Okay, the first thing that we should be able to find before finding AE is we, want, we need to find AC itself. Okay, we need to find AC itself. Look at this. We know AB. And we know BC. So we can find from here up to here. So that's the first thing that we need to be able to work out for this question. And how can we work that out? So let's start with that one. So we are going to say AC. AC is equal to... How can we move from A up to C? So we can either go in this direction. Or we can go in this direction. Or we can go in this direction, or we can go in this direction. But only take the direction where you know all the values. And the only direction is first we are going to move from A up to B. Why? Because we know this one. So we are going to say A up to B. And then we are going to move from B up to C. Why? Because we know also this value. So we are going to say B up to C like that. So that is the only thing that you need to get to understand when you're dealing with these vectors. Just know the directions that you are taking. So I'm going to say AC is equal to what is AB? AB is A. You are able to see even where the arrow is going, so it will be A. And then what is BC? BC is 2B. Okay, that's 2B. So we have found the vector AC. We have found the vector AC. But the question is asking us to find the vector AE. A, E. Now, since we already said that this was 1, this was 1, and then the total distance from A up to C was 3, meaning that A, E is just 1 out of 3 of the whole vector A, C. That's the meaning. Because here it is 1. 
the total vector up to the end is a 3, meaning that A is just 1 out of 3 or 4, A, C. Do you understand that or you have a question? So we're going to say this is going to be 1 over 3, and then we'll put what is AC? AC is this one that we have found, A plus 2B. Like that. This is the answer. Okay, this is the answer. If I want, I can multiply. 1 over 3 times A, that will be 1 over 3 with an A here. And then 1 over 3 times 2B, that is going to be 2 over 3b. If I want, I can leave the answer like this. Okay, this is the vector AE. Any question? No questions. Okay, good. Now, I want to find the vector BE. That is for part B. So, for the vector BE, what we are going to do is BE. Okay, where is BE? Is from here up to here. Now that we know AE, we are able to find the vector BE. Okay, able to find the vector BE. And how can we find BE? We are going to first move from B up to A. So I'm going to say from B up to A. And then now we're going to move from the from A up to E. Like that. So what is BA? Okay, what is BA? You see, They've given us a b. Look at where the arrow is going. It's going forward. But as we want b a, meaning that we are going to put a negative in front of a because we know that a b is a, but b a is going to be negative a because we are going in the opposite direction. And then we are going to say plus. What is a e? A e is this one that you have found here. Okay, that is uh, one over three a, and then plus. 2 over 3b, like that. So you can see this one has got an a, this one has got an a. So we are supposed to add those two because they are like terms, supposed to add them. And now are we able to add them, we are just going to say negative a plus, I can also say 1 times this a which is on top, that is going to be just a, because 1 over 3a is the same as a over 3. So that is going to be A over 3. So I can say this A is the same as over 1. So I'm going to look for the lowest common denominator, which is a 3. 1 into 3, that is a 3. 3 times negative A, negative 3A. Three, 3 into 3 is 1. 1 times A, that is Z, A. And then negative 3A plus A, that will be negative 2A over 3. So that is what is going to give us negative 2A over 3. And then plus, remember we also have this part here, which is 2 over 3b. Yes. How did you find negative 2a? Negative 2a. Yeah. Over 3. Here, here, we are, we are making this as a single fraction. Yes. So I have seen negative a times 3. It's negative A. Okay, let me write it again. So what we have is negative A plus uh, three. A over 3. Like that, right? Okay. So I'm going to say this is also over 1, isn't it? Yes, so I'm saying that negative A. Oh, 3 negative oh. 3 times negative a. Yes, that is negative 3a, right? Yeah. And then 1 times a. 1 times 4. So you have to put plus. Plus. 4. No, this is this is a. This is a. 4 times 1. Oh, this is a. Oh. Yeah. So 1 times a, that would be a, right? And then you okay. multiply these two, which are down. 1 times 3, that is a 3. Three, yeah. And then negative 3a plus a, that's negative 2a over 3. It's 15 hours. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I have to subtract from the side negative. I have to subtract from the a. Yes. Okay, I understand.
Okay, good. Now we can look at uh, C, which is asking us to find what? To find BD. Okay, we want to find BD. So let me rub this. So vectors are very simple. As long as you just understand how to make movements, always make movements where there is a point that has been given. Okay. So we want okay. now to find BD. That is for question C. Now, how can you go from B to D? Remember, BD is here. So for us to move from B to D, we need first to move from B to A. So we're going to say BA. And then now we move from A up to D. Okay. And we know that BA is negative A. And then AD is B. So we have found this is BD, as simple as this. You get that? Yes. Okay, good. And then the next one. Part two, and this question was carrying uh, just part two alone. This one, which is saying, hence or otherwise show that the points B, D, and E are collinear. This was cutting five marks, this question. Okay. Now, when you are talking about collinearity of vectors, a vector to be collinear, so we are talking of B, D, and E. B, D, and E. If these vectors are collinear, meaning that they lie on the same line. They are on the same line. That's the meaning of collinear. Okay? They are on the same line. Or if not on the same line, they are on lines which are parallel. Okay? So to show that vectors are collinear, remember this is five marks. So look at the points you've been given. You've been given B, D, and E. So what you are going to say, you are going to get B and D, the of them so i'm going to find bd okay just a moment just a moment okay Are you still able to see my screen? Okay. Can you see my screen? So, PT. Are you able to see? Yeah, are you able to see the screen I'm using? Are you able to see the question? Okay, like I'm saying that we have to find that as PT. Chip, are you able to see the screen? Yes, I'm able to see the screen on the question as well. All right, all right. Now, what we are saying is this. For us to be able to show that the points are collinear, I want to show that B, D, and E are collinear. First thing you need to find is e, B, D, okay? After you find BD, also find BE. After you find BE, also find DE. So you need to find these three values. If you find these three values, you are now going to be able to show. So if they have given you any three values, you want to show that those values are collinear. Of course, when you're talking about being collinear, there's also you can also do it on coordinate geometry. You're going to find the gradient. Okay, the gradient is supposed to be equal. Now, here we can't find the gradient. So, find BD, find DE, and then find BE. So, let's start with the BD. Okay. You want to find the vector BD. How can you move from B to D? For BD, we have already calculated. I think this is the one that we are just from doing. Okay, the BD. What do you find? What did we find for BD? Mm 
Mike, what did we find for BD? So we put uh, ET. What did we find for BD for, for this question, which is here? So we found negative, negative A plus B. This is what we found. You've forgotten. This is the one we found. We already did that on question C. So we have found B, D. The next one we need to find D is B, E. Okay? Find B, E. And how do you find B, E? B, E we also already found. We already found B, E. Remember, this was question B here. We already calculated. And what did we find? Is it negative, uh, negative 2 over 3A? plus uh, 2 over 3b this is what we found already right it was here and then now uh, the next one we want to find is de or let's find uh, since we are moving from b we have found be we have found B, D. We need to find also E, D. So we go in the same direction. So instead of finding D, you are going to find E, D. Since we are going in the same direction, E, D. So for us to be able to find E, D, to move from E to D, we first move from E to A. Okay. E to A. And then we are going to move from A to D. And then you have found E, D. Now we already calculated EA again. What did we find as EA since I've rubbed? Who can read out? What did we find as EA? Of course, we calculated AE. Can someone tell me what did we find as AE? On the first question, just read what you wrote. What did we find? Mark, can you read what you wrote down? You didn't write. Yes, so it was supposed to be um, e, e. Chip also didn't write. We was supposed to write um, D, D, A. Hmm? Okay, so we said uh, AC was, uh, first we find, found AC and we said AE was 1 over 3 of AC and AC we said it was A plus 2B. This is what we found and this was giving us A over 3 if we multiply. And then plus 2 over 3B, like this. So now here we want EA. This is AE. Remember, AE e is just negative of EA. Okay, this is what we've been talking about. So since we know EA, we are just going to multiply the whole of this by a negative. So it will be negative A over 3. And then this negative times also the 2 over 3B. Okay, this is EA. And then plus AD. What is AD? AD, we are able to see that's a B here. Like that. So this is going to give us negative A over 3. Now let's add negative 2B over 3 plus B. Since these are like terms, we can also say this is over 1. So multiply negative 2B times 1, that's negative 2B. Plus 3 times B, that is going to be 3B over three so negative two b plus three b that is going to be positive b uh, and then over three yes um obviously negative two b mm -hmm. so you have to go to times one or plus times times one okay i understand okay now after you find this to show that they are collinear you need to show that there are multiples of each other. Okay, there are multiples of each other. 
what I mean by multiple is uh, mm -hmm. a multiple mm -hmm. is a number that can go into a number. That's a multiple. Okay. So we are going to say, look at this. We have got see, first BD. Okay. BD. I'm going to write BD. And then I'm going to write uh, BE. And then I'm going to write ED like that. So what is BD? You can say that BD is negative A plus B. Okay? This is equal to what is BE? Now look at BE. This is BE here. What I'm going to do is for BE, I'm going to factorize out negative. I mean 2 over 3. I'm going to factorize out 2 over 3. Okay, I factorize out 2 over 3 like that. Good. Okay. If I remove 2 over 3 here, what is going to remain is negative what? Okay. Negative A, isn't it? And then if I factorize also here 2 over 3, what will remain is what? A positive B. Okay? And then I also go to ED. ED, I'm also going to factorize out a, a 1 over mm -hmm. 3. I'm go so if I remove 1 over 3 here, what is going to remain is negative A. Okay? Like that. And then what is going to remain here also if I remove out a 3 in the denominator is just a B. Like that. So are you okay. able to see everything is the same? Everything is the same inside here. This is negative A plus B. This is negative A plus B. This is negative A plus B. So that's what we mean that they are multiples of each other. Therefore, they are collinear. Do you get that? Yes. That's right. Okay. So that is how you work out that one. Let's look at this one, which came in 2017. So for this one, they've given us in the diagram below, OP is 2Q, OQ is 4Q, and then they're going at PX to XQ is 1 to 2. PX, so PX meaning that it is 1. And then XQ is 2. That's the one you've been given. So we're going to come here. What is PX? PX is here. It's going to be 1. And then XQ is going to be 2. This is going to be 2. So meaning that the total from P to Q is going to be a 3. The total... So what about X2? X, XQ. Mm. XQ is a 2. XQ is 2. Yes. Then P is 1. Oh, okay. Okay, good. So, now the first question we want to find is PQ. So, to be able to find PQ, what we are going to do is, look, we want to move from P to Q. So we're first going to move from P to O. So we're going to say P, O. And then we're going to now move from O to Q, like that. Okay? So P, Q, we can see P, Q is what? Is a negative 2P. Why am I saying negative? Because the arrow is going up, but as we are going down. And then plus O, Q. O, Q is given here, which is a 4Q. Okay, so just this, we have found PQ. That's how we are able to find PQ. And then the next one to find, this is A. We want to find PX. Now, how do you find PX? Since we know PQ, we know that this is 1, this is 2. And the total is 3 from here up to here. We want to find Px. So Px is just 1 out of the total, which is 3. And the total is what? Is Pq. Okay. So Px is 1 out of 3 of Pq. 
and then we're going to write that as 1 over 3. What is PQ? PQ is negative 2P plus 4Q. Like that. And then we can multiply 1 over 3 times negative 1, negative 2P. That will give us negative 2P over 3. And then 1 over 3 times 4Q. That will give us 4 over 3Q. Like that. Yes, uh, Chipo. Have a question? Yes, I have a question. Yes. When you are finding PQ, mm -hmm. why didn't you write it as PO negative? Mm -hmm. PO plus OQ, but you've written it as PQ plus OQ. You are, you are actually right. This was supposed to be PO, not PQ. That was the writing here. PQ is PO plus OQ. Because we are moving from P to O. And then from O, now we go to Q. And then the PO, I mean the PO here, I don't know why I'm writing Q. The PO is what is the same as negative OP. Like that. So PO is the same as negative OP. Is that okay now? Yes, it's okay. All right. Okay, so now we can find C. Now, the way these questions come, especially this question, if you fail to get this which are on top, it will be very, very difficult for you to get part two. This one which is showing show that. Okay, let's find OX. How can you find OX? You can see O is here, X is here. So OX is going to be equal to, since we know PX, we are going to move from O to P first. So that will be OP. And then now from P to X. So that is how we are going to move. Okay. So you always go in the direction where you know something. So here we are going to say, what is OP? OP, you are able to see that is 2P. And then plus, what is PX? PX is here. So I'm going to put that. So the PX is uh, starting with negative. Negative 2 over 3P. And then plus 4 over 3 Q. So all we are going to do is we are going to add the 2P minus 2P over 3. We need to make this as a single fraction since these are like terms. So we say over 1. Multiply this 2P times 3, that is going to be 6P. And then 1 times 2P, that is negative 2P. And the denominator 1 times 3, that is going to be 3. So 6P plus, minus 2P, this is going to give us 4P over 3. And then plus 4Q over 3. Okay, like that. So we have found now. Or X. Is there any question here before we do the, the part two? Is there any question? I have a question. Yes. I'm happy to see where this 4P the first week. Mm -hmm. I'm supposed to write um, 4P over 4P. Okay, so. 4P, 4P over 4 plus. Oh, okay. Let me let me redo it. We have got two uh, p minus two p over three, right? This is the one, isn't it? Yeah, I could put over two. Yeah. So this is going to be over one, right? Yeah. Uh huh. And then to merge it, you multiply this and this, isn't it? Oh uh, yeah. Okay. Six p. Uh. And then multiply this with this. Negative 2p. Then multiply these two. That is a 3. You get it now? Huh? Yeah, I guess. Okay. Uh, yes, Chipo. 
And then I started from the beginning. When you found PQ, is it okay to take it to its lowest terms, making it as negative P plus 2Q? And as well, on this part that you are finding for uh, mm -hmm. C, is it also okay to factorize since they both have the same factor of 4 over 3? You put it outside, then you put P and Q in the bracket. All right. So the only thing that you are able to do here is the second thing you've said. You can only factorize, so you can't divide. Even here, you can write this as negative. Since 2 is common, you say negative 2. Then you're going to have P minus 2Q here. So you can't divide both sides by a negative. You can't divide both sides by 2. You can only factorize. Same this side, you can factorize out 4 over 3. What remains is P plus Q like that. So that's the only thing that you're able to do. You can't divide. Yes, you can do that. Right. Okay. Now let's work out uh, this the second part. And these are the parts that I love about vectors, which say show that I love those parts. Now, this means that if you got OX wrong, you can't get this question correct, the second part. You can't if you got OX wrong. So, now they've given us already that OC. So, they've already told us that OC is equal to H OX. So, the first thing is, first work with this same statement they've given you here. It's equal to H OX. What is OX? I'm going to put in brackets. OX will find 4 over 3 P plus 4 over 3 Q, like that. And then I'll multiply the H, okay? I'll multiply the H. So H times 4 on top there, that will be 4H over 3 P. And then the same H times this one here, that is going to be 4H over 3 oh, with a Q. Okay? Do we get that? Yeah. All right. Okay. And then now you can work out the question they've, they've told you. Now they've said, show that CQ, CQ. Just know that this same statement that they've given you first here is going to be used in finding CQ. So where is CQ? CQ is here from C up to Q. So to find CQ, the first thing that we need to find is Z. I mean, we need to go from C to O, okay? So I'm going to say CQ is C O. And then from O, and then we're going to move to Q. Or Q like that. So this is how we're going to move. Okay. Now, we know that C O is the same as negative O C. Okay. C O is the same as negative O C. So I'm going to put, I'll say this is equal to. I'll put a negative and then OC. Since that's the one we know. And then plus OQ. And then I will write negative. What is OC? OC we have 4H over 3P. And then plus uh, 4H over 3Q. Like that. And then we write plus OQ. What is OQ? That is Z. 4q and then from here i'm going to multiply this negative with what is inside there okay i'll multiply with what is inside so that is going to be negative 4h over 3p and then again negative 4h over 3q and then plus 4q please you need to be looking at where you are going Okay, be looking at where you are going. So you have seen that the one which contains a P should be at the end. So I'm going to take the one with a P at the end. So this is the one here. Okay. And then you can see that you have got only one thing here. So in other words, I'm going to get this and bring it at the beginning. Please, the sign will not change. The sign only changes when you cross the equal sign. We're not crossing the equal sign. So I'm going to say 4Q. Keep those with Q's together, minus uh, 4H over 3Q, 
And then this one with a P, I'll take it at the end there, negative 4H over 3P. Okay, from there, what are we able to see here? They factorize out T4. So I'm going to factorize out 4, okay? Apart from factorizing out 4, you are able to see that they have also factorized out T, Q. So those are the two things that we are factorizing out, please. Not we we'll factorize out two things. You always look at where you are going. So I'm going to factorize out 4. I'm going to put it at this end. Let me first just write brackets here. And then I'm also factorized out Q. Now look, this was just 4Q. We have removed 4. We have also removed Q. What remains is just a 1. Okay? And then this one, we have removed a 4. We have also removed a Q. What remains is just negative H over 3. And then we write now the one which is at the end, which is the 4H over 3P. Hence, shown. So we have shown. That's the thing that you've been given. Okay, does that make sense? Yes. Chipo, are we good? Well, okay. Okay. Okay, let's look at this question here. In the diagram below, OABC is a parallelogram in which OA is A and uh, AB is 2B. And AC intersect at D. Okay? AC intersect with OB at D. This is a point. Now, they've said E is a midpoint of CD. This point is the middle of these two. Pay attention to that. And E is the midpoint of CD. Okay. Now that we know that. Now, since they have said this is a parallelogram, you know that for a parallel, you should know that for a parallelogram, if this side is A, meaning that this side is also A. If this side is 2B, this side is also 2B. That's a parallelogram. Those two sides are equal. So to be able to find OB, we want to move from O to B. We can take any direction. We can go like this or we can go like this since we know both sides. So it doesn't matter which side you take. It's going to give you the same answer. So we're going to say O, B is Z. We'll start from O. We go to A. B looking where we are going. And then we are going to move from A. Now we reach to B. Okay. So what is O, A? O, A is A. What is AB? AB is 2B. So we have found for the first one for A. And then for B, we want to find OE. To be able to find OE, how are we able to do that? We want to move from O to E. From O to E. The first thing to know for us to move from O to E is we need to know at least another side, okay? Another side. You want to move from here up to here. How do you move from there up to there? Do you know any side? You look look at this question. You only know you only know this side. You don't know this one. You don't know this one. So it will be very difficult for you to move. Okay? But the thing is we are able to calculate this one. Okay? We are able to calculate that. So that's what we are going to do for us to be able to calculate OE. And how are we able to do that? We first need to calculate AD. I mean AC. Okay? Let's calculate AC. How do you calculate AC? To move from A to C, you can move from A to B and then from B to C. So you can move from A to O and then from O to C. Any. So let's say from A to O and then from O to C like that. Now, OA is going to be negative A. And then OC is going to be 2B. Okay? Now, we know, let's now find DC. Let's find DC. Now, you need to know that if you've got a parallelogram, and then lines intersect like this, 
where they intersect. This is going to be the middle of this line. It's going to be the middle. Meaning that for me to find DC, DC is just going to be half of AC. Okay, just half of AC. And that is going to be half. What is AC? AC we've already calculated negative A plus 2B. Let's multiply. Half times negative A, that will be negative A over 2. Half times 2B, that will just be positive B. Okay, because these two and these two cancel. Now we have found DC. The next thing to find is AC. How can you find S? Remember I told E is a midpoint, meaning that EC is also going to be half of DC. Okay, so that is going to be 1 over 2. What is DC? DC we have found negative A over 2 plus B. We can again multiply half times negative A over 2, that will be negative A over 4. And then half times B, that will be B over 2. So we have found EC. So we can now work out the one we are asked in the question to calculate. And since we know EC, you should know that EC is the same as DE since E is the midpoint. So we are going to say OE, we can move first from O to C. And then from C to E, like that. Okay. So what is OE? O, I mean OC, OC is 2B from what we are able to see. And then plus, what is CE? Now CE, we only know EC, not CE. We know that CE is negative of EC. Meaning that just multiply this one you have by a negative. Meaning that negative times negative A over 4, that will give us positive A over 4. Negative times B over 2, that will give us negative B over 2. And here we can now add like terms. We have got the 2B, okay? And then we've got negative B over 2. We can also say this is over 1. Multiply 2B times 2, that will be 4B. Multiply A by 1 by B, that will be negative B. And then the denominators is 2. So that is going to give us, first we have got A over 4, which we have not used. 4B minus B, that is going to give us a 3B over 2. So this is our OE. That is how to work out OE. Now the next one is saying we calculate CD. I think CD, we already know the answer. For CD, we even already know the answer, so it's not it's not hard for CD. So to be able to work out CD, we know that CD is just a negative of DC, okay? And we already calculated DC. DC we calculated here as negative, negative A over 2 plus uh, B. That's what we have just at DC here. So we'll just put a negative in front of that. So negative times this one becomes positive A over 2. Negative times B becomes negative B. Like that. This is CD. Any question? Any question? Are we okay? Mark, are we okay? Chip, are we okay? Yes, okay. Okay, let's look at this last question here. So this is 2017. The internal exam which was written. In the figure below, OAB is a triangle in which OA is 3A and OB is 6B. OC to CA is 2 to 3, meaning that OC is 2 and then CA 
is three. Okay, like that. We can even put them on the diagram. O C, where is O C? O C is here, meaning this is a two, and then C A, this is a three, meaning that the total from O to A is going to be five. And then they've also given that A D to D B is one two, to meaning that this is one, this is two. A D, A D is e, one. And then DB is 2, okay, like that. Meaning that the total A to B is a 3. Now the first question we have A. We want to find AB. So to be able to find AB, AB like that, we are going to first move from A to O. And then we are going to move from O to B. So from A to O, since we know O to A, that is 3A, meaning that from A to O, that is going to be negative 3A. And then plus O to B, that is a 6B. Okay, that is the first one. The second one, we want to find O, D. We want to find O, D. Now, for us to move from O to D, we first need to know what? We should be able to know anyone. We should know either A, D, or D, B, any one of those. Okay? So let's find A, D. So from the ratios we have, we can see that A, D is just 1 out of the total. The total line is going to be 1 plus 2, which is a 3. So A, D is 1 over 3 or 4. A, B. And we've already found what A, B is. A, B is negative 3. A plus 6B. We multiply 1 over 3 times negative 3A. That is going to be negative A. 1 over 3 times 6B, which is going to be 2B. We found AD. Now I can find OD. So OD is going to be from O to A. And then we move now from A to D like that. And then OA is a 3A. Okay? A, D is the one you found here, negative A plus 2B. So 3A minus A, that is going to be 2A. And then 2B, like that, we have found O, D. And then the next one, we want to find B, C. We want to find B, C. Now, for us to be able, able to move from B to C, we should be able to go from B to A and then from A to C. Or we can move first from B to O to give us the same answer. And then from O to C. Now, what is B O? B O is going to be negative 6B. What will be O C? Now, from what we're able to see here, O C, we've been given ratios. O C, this there is a 2 that you've put here. So it's going to be 2 over the total. The total is what? It is 2 plus 3 which is 5. So it's going to be 2 over 5 of what? Of OA. That's a line OA. So this is going to be 2 over 5. What is OA? OA is a 3A. And then we can multiply 2 times 3. That is going to be 6 over 5A. Okay? So that is the OC. 6 over 5A. So we have found those. Now, for B E here, I mean for part two, given that B E is equal to H B C. So we start with the same B E we've been told. B E is H B C. What is B C? We've already calculated here. We can put that negative six B plus six over five A. Then we we'll multiply. This will be negative six H B and then plus 6H over 5A. So this is BE. Now the question is saying express BE in terms of H, A, and B. So we have done that. We've expressed BE. Okay, you see there's H, there's B, and there's A. So this is how you work out these.